Welcome to this Monday Thursday service of First Presbyterian Church of Marietta, Ohio. It is just a little bit after 7 on April 9th. Beloved people of God, this is the day when Christ, our Passover Lamb, surrendered himself, setting us free from sin and death forever. This is the day when Christ, our Teacher and Lord, knelt to wash the disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy feast with his followers, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. Let us pray. O oh God, your love is embodied in Jesus Christ. Wash us from the stain of sin so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial. Praise him always as Lord in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Again, I bid you welcome on this night. We are so glad you can join us either through the live stream or if you're watching this later on. We hope your families are safe and healthy and well during this time. This is a very different Holy Week than any of us have ever experienced, but we rejoice in the fact that God is faithful, God is with us, God will care for us and treasure us and watch over us. Let us again turn to God in prayer as we ask God to speak to us through the word that will be shared with us tonight. Eternal God, by your word and spirit, you've given us a new commandment to love and serve one another in Jesus' name. Let the good news of your liberating love be sealed in our hearts and shown in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of the months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and the staff in your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you in the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. And then from the Gospel of John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew his hour had come. He knew his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put in his in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during the supper, Jesus, knowing his father, had given all things into his hand, and that he'd come from God and was going to God. He got up from the table, he took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
on this night, there are three ideas I think we need to hold on to that speak to us from this scripture and other scriptures. We are united with one another in this meal. Even though we are separated by the challenge we face in COVID-19, we are united. And not just to one another at the First Presbyterian Church of Marietta, but to Christians all over the world this night who gather to celebrate this very feast and this very day in the life of the church. It's an incredible thing to think about. And it's also incredible to realize that Christ's passion is a unifying force in our world. He came for all of humanity. We are all connected by what he did. Another idea I think would do well for us to hold is how incredibly deep the love was that Jesus showed to his disciples that night, even though he knew he was going to his death. He showed them tender, loving actions at that meal by his example. And, of course, by his suffering and death. And finally, it's incredible to realize Jesus gave us an example of humility, of how we were to care for each other. A challenging example. An example we all struggle to live up to. But an example, nevertheless, that can remind us that just as he did this for the disciples, he wants us to do these kinds of acts of service to one another. I put into the service tonight the opportunity to invite you to do an offering. And of course, you can do that online or you can mail a check to the church. And there are options at the bottom of your bulletin if you printed those out. But this is a good chance to also encourage you to think about another kind of offering. Of course, there are opportunities we can help neighbors and friends. We can reach out and call people on the phone. We can send pictures and emails and letters and notes. That kind of communication, that kind of encouragement is so, so important. We can also do things for one another. If you happen to be sheltering in a household, I know this is a time people are starting to get on each other's nerves and tired of being around each other. And that kind of thing happens in any household. Jesus' example is a good reminder to us that we can continue to faithfully and humbly show love to one another during this time. Let us prepare our hearts as we go to this table, to this feast that Jesus has prepared for us. The Lord said to Moses, this shall be a day of remembrance for you, and you shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. And Paul said to the church, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God, ruler of the universe. You made us in your image to live in the covenant of your everlasting love. Thank you for Jesus, our Passover lamb, who offered his life for us, and gave us the commandment to love one another. Blessed are you, God, ruler of the universe. You bring forth fruit from the vine and bread from the earth. You nurture and nourish the whole world with your abounding mercy and steadfast love. Blessed are you, God, who sustains the universe. We give you thanks, all loving God, for in Jesus Christ, our manna, you gave us spiritual food and drink that we may feast on eternal life. Blessed are you, God, who gives the Holy Spirit to the church. Send your Holy Spirit to bless these offerings of your church and renew us in Christ. Perfect in us the love that casts out fear. And give all who share in this communion fullness of your spirit for the forgiveness of sins, resurrection from the pit, and new life in your realm, which has no end. Blessed are you, God, for the kingdom is yours now and forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And as our Savior has taught us, we come to you now, Lord, with our prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those who have uh, tuned in, if you need to take a couple of minutes to gather communion elements or to get that set up, I'm going to offer you the opportunity to do that. And while you are doing that, I have to go lock up one of our house cats who's scratching at the door and being a real nuisance right now. He didn't bother us on Sunday, but he has decided he is going to do that today. So you all spend a few minutes preparing your elements for communion or in silent prayer for those who especially need God's love and touch tonight. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took the bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And also, in the same manner, after they had eaten, he took the cup, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. And remember, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and I invite you to partake individually or together in your households now, wherever you are. The body and blood of Christ given for you. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption we have shared tonight in Christ's body and blood. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This night, I invite you to care for one another with tender love and humility. 
rely on God as Jesus relied on God's compassion and love during his trial. And I encourage you to seek joy and share joy. Never forget that Easter is coming. Amen.